What is up everybody? I want you to go over here to this link. Now this is gonna be linked uh, in the YouTube description, canva.com forward slash colors forward slash color wheel. And when you bring it up, we wanna change um, right here under choose a color combination from complementary to triadic. All right, so this video, I'm today I'm gonna to show you how to create color schemes really quickly in the triadic sense and it's a really great way to quickly infuse, you know, color and create colorful layouts essentially. And I'm going to show you how to do it in several different contexts. All right. So if we move this color around, you'll see that we basically have a triangle that is affecting uh, the colors. And it also allows you to change the lightness and darkness values. And it also allows you to change the tone or in other words, introducing gray. And so we're gonna experiment with this in several different contexts. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably wanna be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients and jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship, where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the coupon code UI2022, and that will give you 22% off at checkout. So over here, I have this design. This is from my last tutorial that we did here on the channel last week. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is just taking this design and applying these triadic color schemes to this design, essentially. So I'm going to just take this, and oh, by the way, I'll make this available as well in the YouTube description. So I'm gonna take this and just uh, duplicate it. And so we have the original. And what I wanna do first is I'm gonna take this and I'm, I'm just going to, going to um, let's think, how do I wanna approach this? We wanna make this like really colorful. So we could do this in a couple ways. Um, we can go ahead and hit plus under fill. We could put this, um, drag this fill color underneath here. And let's choose a first triadic color scheme. Um, I actually like this one right here. So if we take this bottom one and we push it to like around the turquoise or the teal color range, you'll see the three colors that we have here. You simply click here uh, on the hex color code to copy it automatically. Um, so let's take this one right here, this uh, yellowish. Maybe we wanna add a little bit more, if we wanna add a little bit more green to it, we just push it over here slightly. There we go. And what I'm gonna do is take this color at the bottom right here where it says 20% and it's black. And I'm going to change this to hex. We're gonna paste that in and make sure it's all the way up at 100%. So now we can't see it because we have this image on top. So all we have to do is change this to luminosity. And I may also change a couple other things like exposure, uh, take contrast down a lot. Um, let's see, highlights. Yeah, something like that possibly. And maybe also change this to like 50% or maybe 60%, there we go. All right, so that's our first color. That's a part of our triadic color scheme. So now we have to make a decision. This background is not white. Um, we could change this to white for the background itself real quick. Um, and then also uh, let's take a look at the other two colors that we have to use. So we have this one down here, this blue. So maybe we'll take this, and by the way, I'm gonna scale this down. Uh, we're gonna put it maybe like right there. Um, we'll take that. Uh, I'll, I'll do also wanna add another rectangle here so we can more easily see this back, this, this form background. So what I'm gonna do is just put a rectangle behind it, and then we'll make uh, this in that blue. blue. Well, look at that. This in and of itself already is great. Uh, honestly, I, I, I would probably say, hey, uh, this right here is a great color scheme. We can add it to you know a potential candidate for choosing colors or whatever. But be, being that we wanna infuse more color, let's use that final color right here, which is this uh, pinkish red sort of color. So maybe we'll take our background, our button background color, make it that, and there we go. Let's go ahead, by the way, and uh, 
make that bold. There we go. And there we go. A color scheme that's pretty much entirely comprised of that triadic color scheme that we chose with that tool. Now we do kind of see this little thing right here, this little uh, watermark. What we could do with that is like take this background and then just make it really light. And there we go. All right, let's try that again with another really vibrant, really saturated color scheme. So for this one, let's take this and let's just drag this over right there. Now we have three different colors that we could choose from now. All right, so I'll grab for this one, maybe the purple and we'll come back here and apply it right there. These two colors, this blue and that purple, actually go together really well. Like this right here could be its own color scheme as well. Technically, it wouldn't be triadic, but they still work well. There's no rule saying that we have to. So you may discover you come across um, other color schemes that aren't necessarily within this context of being triadic that you really like anyways. Um, let's take this one and maybe we'll make these two that color. All right, and then finally, the last thing that we haven't used is this green. So this green can go for a button background. And then we're going to have to make the text black. There we go. Look at that. Look how quick and easy we can apply this. Now notice, I'm not really messing around with the type. When you have too much color type, uh, it can really hurt uh, the context of a design. Like if we change this to, to that color, Okay, maybe you might be able to get away with that. I personally wouldn't want to use that. But if you start changing a bunch of colors and making uh, the text a bunch of different colors, it really hurts the design. So keeping the uh, the, the 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 text you know higher contrast is is really important. All right. Now let's try another one in which we're going to make it lighter. Uh, because remember, we have these other values that we can apply. So for instance, um, let's see about maybe pushing this over. Yeah, let's stay here except maybe we'll make these a lot lighter. And maybe we'll, we'll push this to, right here. Okay, so for this one, yeah, you know what, let's go back to the original and then just, there we go. I like this this color palette a lot better. So let's take this blue and see what happens here when we experiment with now the colors that ha are a lot lighter in value. Um, we can go ahead and then and take this. We'll make this color that, but we wouldn't want to change an icon like this to be really low contrast. For instance, if we change it to that, you could barely see it. Now it just looks bad. For large areas like a rectangle, you could do that. Um, but this I would just make black. So you, you have a lot of options. Um, we could then also take this color for the button background. We can do that. And then maybe, you know what, we'll just use the same color here for that. So this is something that you could entirely do as well. Maybe you don't want it to be the same. Maybe we make that even lighter. That's fine as well. All right. And we'll do another example, one final example, where we also adjust the tone or the amount of gray that's introduced into the color. So to do that, we'll bring this over here. We'll come over here. And now we'll just bring these in. All right. So maybe we will, let's see here, I'm trying to find a, a color scheme that I might want to work with. And then we could also make it real dark or real light. We're just going to leave it in the center or so. All right, that looks good there. So let's take this green. We'll add it behind here. All right, and then we will take our, let's take this color. It's like a, a bluish color. We'll add it there. Maybe we'll add that there as well. All right, and then finally, we have this over here. We'll take this. 
That's a little bit too, I really don't like this font, but that's fine. Okay. Maybe we'll take this final little watermark, push it up right around there, and there we go. Clearly we could see this one because it, it's not as vibrant in color because we introduced a lot of tone or grays into the colors, it's more muted. You know, it's not as fun. It evokes a different emotion when you view it <clears throat> compared to something like this. So I forgot to uh, duplicate the, the previous example. Uh, I do have a reference. Let's get that up real quick. All right, this one. So this one is the one that was real light. So it works well when you have a, a light color scheme, you have black text, that way it's always gonna contrast well. Uh, and there we go. So we have a, a, a really toned, uh, desaturated color scheme. We have a really light triadic color scheme. And then we have full on, full saturation, you know, full color uh, triadic color schemes as well right here. Very, very awesome. Hopefully this uh, video has helped you. Um, it will help you essentially to, to generate color schemes, especially ones where you wanna be able to work in uh, a variety of different colors.